And salvation is a term too that people can have a lot of connotations with it. Because a lot of times the ego's teaching over the past 2,000 years and more of salvation has been, you have to pay a price for it. Yeah. You have to earn it and so on and so forth. And the Course is, is really getting away. The salvation, you could think of a, of a correction, a correction of error or atonement for error. Or a term that a lot of people can relate to is healing. I mean, the purpose of life is healing. If you're not having a total sense of bliss and happiness, and you're not having that high flat line we're talking about, then to say, hey, I'm worth more <laughs> than this, you know, these periods and everything. And there seems to be a problem, and there needs to be a solution, a salvation, a, a healing, a reparation that needs to take place. And it's nice to be reminded again in the Course that it's not a behavioral change that's being asked. That if you change your mind, you will have a change of behavior yeah. that will come. You have a different attitude, that, and your behavior will flow from that that change and everything. Yeah. So we're just going to focus a lot on tracing it back and looking at the mind. Because that's where the healing takes because place. Because that's where the healing takes place. It's in the mind. Even with reparation or healing, a lot of times people will think, well, it's a, it really is that... When you were saying, how do you define the problem, or what is the problem? The ego has defined the problem in terms of the screen. In other words, you mentioned the word yeah. sickness, and the things that come to mind a lot of times are AIDS, cancer, flu, colds, you know, severed limbs, and heart attacks, and cholesterol really level, and yeah, and stiffness, <laughs> and tightness, and not, you know. It's just a whole barrage of, of images that can come to mind when you mention the term sickness. And Jesus right away says, Here, here's my definition of sickness. <coughs> Not right-mindedness, he says, <laughs> is sickness. Oh, back to that, that ego again. <laughs> Not right-mindedness is sickness. And how does Jesus define health? Does he define it in terms of muscle tone? Does he define it in terms of cardiovascular fitness, of pulse? Right. I think he defines it as the relinquishment to use the body lovelessly. Yes, that's one of the definitions of health that he has in the course. And use, that word use, again, that would get back mm -hmm. to purpose. To use the function, the utility of something. It's the purpose you have for it. And that's again at the mind level. So he doesn't define it in terms of any of those things. A healthy body to Jesus Makes no sense. It doesn't make sense. It, it's just as, as funny as a sick body. Now that takes a while immediately. That, that can seem a little disorienting because it could be like, no, I don't want to get into denial here or lose my touch, lose my grounding or whatever. But but if we if we're talking about everything in terms of black and white thinking or all or nothing or right mindedness and wrong mindedness in those terms. It, makes sense that the sickness would be the wrong-mindedness and the health would be right-mindedness. And, and nothing again, else. Right, and nothing else. And nothing else. And it's, again, it's simple. It's simplified, but I mean, haven't we all felt that at some point? If there is such a thing as truth, why would it be so complex? Why wouldn't it be accessible, available? No, and simple. <laughs> Why was it? Is it going to have to be some of this synthetic thing that you've got to just? Got to have a college degree. To college get it. degrees, <laughs> enormous education, all these variables, get everything just right, just get the right combination. Why not something that's real simple? So, to talk about the the ego as the false belief, the belief in separation, we can say that it's a fragmenting belief and. What, what a fragmenting belief does is it fragments, <laughs> it multiplies, it's, it just seems to multiply and multiply. So now we have the belief in separation, and then we can talk about the belief in time. Heaven is eternity. There is no time in eternity. Heaven doesn't have increments and degrees and intervals. Heaven is oneness. There aren't any gradations or intervals of degrees in heaven. So we have time, we have space, we have 
um, seeming different realms. You know, you could talk about the the cosmos. You could talk about the intergalactic realms, <coughs> the solar system realms, you know, planetary. You could talk about atmospheric realms just around the Earth. And then when you come down, you could talk about um, global, national, um, regional, community, um, neighborhood, um, realms within the home. We've got realms within the home. We've got uh, bedrooms and living rooms and dining rooms and basements. And let's take it closer down. We have, we have realms within one room. You know, there seems to be different realms, different spaces in, in one room. Then we bring it down to the personal, interpersonal skills. You hear all this stuff about how is your, how are your interpersonal skills? There's interpersonal. Then we bring it down. Where's my little drawing of our little person here? My golly, there's even realms in in the person, and you could say there's mental realms, emotional realms, thoughts, beliefs, desires. Then, oh wait a minute, the body, we haven't talked about the body, there seems to be systems. You know, you studied nursing, there's all the different, there's the respiratory system, and the cardiovascular system, and the nervous system, and they all seem to interact. Then, what's smaller than, well, we have little organs here, and then there are systems within the organs, and then we get down to the cellular levels, or molecular levels, and then down to the atomic levels, and then we can talk about the subatomic levels, the particles that the quantum physicists are studying. You know, my golly, there just seems to be all kinds of of realms and levels and fragments. Fragment. And the good thing about it is, what what the course is teaching us is that all of those realms and levels are down, perceived to be down here on the screen. You know, they're talked about in terms of the screen. It seems to be, they're all perceptual levels. They all involve the, this perception or degrees and gradations. And what we want to do is we want to see that, that what produced the world down here at the screen are the ego belief. In other words, there's the original belief in separation from God and then all the belief system that seem to spring from the ego. All the beliefs that seem to come from it are all part of the ego belief system. So not only the ego, but all the beliefs that sprang from the ego are part of that film in our projector analogy. So we really have to take a good close look at the film. That's what we're going to be doing, is really just examining the film. Now that can seem kind of, um, um, can seem a little bit unsure <coughs> or vague, so maybe we could I'll just rattle off some that Jesus gives from the Course that seem to be some of these specific beliefs that are involved in the ego belief system. So, it's from Lesson 76. He says, um, if you really think that you would starve unless you have stacks of green paper strips and piles of metal discs, well, there's obviously a pretty strong belief there in money. <laughs> he, he calls it green paper strips and piles of metal discs. You really think a small round pellet or some fluid pushed into your veins through a sharpened needle will ward off disease and death. Yep, that's what the whole idea of, of getting your immunization shots are about. Ward off disease. Why would, why would anyone ever get a shot? a flu shot or any kind of a shot unless it was to ward off disease. That's a belief. He says, you really think you are alone unless another body is with you. <coughs> Companionship. Yeah, it seems to be the case at times. There's a belief. <laughs> oh, if I just had someone here, someone to share my life with, some body. <laughs> <laughs> I had somebody here. He says, it is insanity that thinks these things. Well, insanity is the ego. He's just saying that those are all ego beliefs. You call them laws and put them under different names in a long catalog of rituals that have no use and serve no purpose. 
You think you must obey the, quote, laws of medicine, of economics, and of health. Protect the body and you will be saved. And then the next page, he just continues on. He says, um, we will begin the longer practice periods today with a short review of the different kind of, quote, laws we have believed we must obey. These would include, for example, the laws of nutrition. This was one I know we just, we spent a lot of time on in Adrian. A lot of the people in Adrian were working on their fit for life diet. <laughs> Food plan. What? Food plan, not diet. They correct food themselves whenever yeah. they say Not diet, diet. Food, food plan. plan. Fit for life food plan. Yeah. And of course, there's all kinds of beliefs that have to be, meet, be beneath this food plan to make it work. I mean, you know, what's the, what's the use of putting all this effort and energy into a food plan unless you're doing it sensibly according to the laws of nutrition? Sophisticated, cholesterol, calories, fat content, sodium content. Food combining. Food combining, yeah, protein amino acids and all the things. And they also eat in terms of order, which they ingest proteins or fruits. Or how it's digested, and how it's eliminated. time of day, <coughs> there have been guys that come out about eating one big meal <laughs> in the beginning of the day, or, you know, there's all these different things, time of day, and so on and so forth. Or based on your body type, you know, diets that are designed more yeah. <laughs> for body type. Oh, he just lumps them all together. Jesus doesn't get into all that. He doesn't even get into the cholesterol in here. <laughs> he just lumps them all together in one word. Laws of nutrition, laws of immunization, medication, and of the body's protection in innumerable ways. You know, you could get into insurance plans, all the schemes that seem to be very um, practical in this world. You know, do you have a good insurance plan, a health maintenance organization? or with all the changes that seem to be going on in Washington. How oh, it's all lumped together. Think further. You believe in the laws of friendship. Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> now he's, he's, right, there, there we are back to motherhood. <laughs> that one keep That's the next one. Poking its way through. Good. <laughs> That's right, the next one is good relationships. What it means to be a good See, that's the mother. other thing you put in front of the mother is good, good mother. Good mother. mother. It's not, you can't just be a mother. You can't just be a mother, but you have to be a good mother, right. you know. Yeah. Good father, good son. Different criteria. Good employee, good employer, good neighbor, good citizen. All these things. All the ego system. And the last thing he throws in is and the laws of reciprocity. Now, now that, that seems to fit in with those laws of friendship as well as those good relationships. Too, that there's a lot of laws of reciprocity that are tied in there. You know. So you can see where where this is leading. He even says, um, perhaps you even think that there are laws which set forth what is God's and what is yours. Many, quote, religions have been based on this. They would not say, but damn, in heaven's name. You know, the do's and don'ts. You do these things, you go to hell. You do these things, you go to heaven. Kind of like there can be, you could say, fear-based. <laughs> you better not do these things. We call these things sins, <laughs> and don't do them. And again, if you really look at them, again, it's it's they're, be, they're at the behavioral level. If you do these things, certain behaviors are sins. Killing someone is it's not so good. You know, I mean, that would definitely be kind of in the sin category. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. I mean, that's the Ten Commandments. Thou yeah. shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. You know, that starting to covet is starting to get more back to the desire again, because it's more of a want. But um, thou shalt not steal. You know, robbery. That's that's definitely defined in terms of a of behavioral component. And yet, you know, a lot of times when you get into friendships and relationships, people talk about stealing emotionally. I hear the terms. You know, you always take, you take so much from me emotionally, you drain me emotionally, you don't give anything back. Well, there's more stealing, but instead of stealing someone's green paper strips or their, or their comb or their toothpaste or their